we talked about, who can remind us of last week's topic? We are in lesson 10 this morning. Last week was lesson 9. We talked about bearing fruit. Praise the Lord. Not just bearing fruit, but bearing fruit that will abide. Praise Master Jesus. And one of the prerequisites to get to bear fruit that we abide, we talked about prayerfulness. Praise the Lord. Intercession, prayers, interceding for the brethren. Praise the Lord. That's one of the things we talked about last week. So today, lesson 10, and the topic says the weapons of our warfare. Praise the Lord. In this life we are, we are in a warfare. Amen. So we're going to be looking at the weapons of our warfare. Our memory verse is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. We are going to be taking it together. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And it says, let's go. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty true God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Um, Praise the Lord. Ali. Praise Master Jesus. The weapons of our warfare, they are not of this world. Praise Master Jesus. When these, you see these soldiers getting ready for war, you see them, they are armed with a lot of things, a lot of armor, armories. You see them having their, the one that protects the head, the one that protects the chest, the one you, they, get, they have a lot of things. So as they are not of this world, the weapons of our warfare, they are spiritual. Praise the Lord. We are going to be looking at the weapons of our warfare. The things we use to go into our warfare. Praise the Lord. We are going to be reading Ephesians chapter 3, chapter 6, verses 13 to 18. And it says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, praise the Lord. For us to be able to withstand the evil day, we need to take up what? The whole armor of God so that we can stand. But he says, stand therefore, having gathered your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. We are going to be looking at the truth. How do you get your waist with the truth? How do you put on the breastplate of righteousness? Verse 15 says, Having shot, praise the Lord. Verse 15 says, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. How do you shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of feet? And above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation. Praise the Lord. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. Praise the Lord. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end. With all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praise the Lord. The introduction says, the Bible points out to us that the conflict with Satan is spiritual. Therefore, no physical weapon can be effectively employed against him and his agents. You don't fight the, 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 war, the warfare we are in this world. You don't go into it like the army do. do. You don't go into the warfare with physical weapons. The weapons we have mentioned, they are spiritual. Praise the Lord. The first one is getting your waist with truth. We are going to be looking at what is that truth you are guiding your waist with. Look at 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 4, and that's our memory verse. Praise the Lord. Who can remind us of our memory verse? 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. It's... Praise the Lord. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities and powers. And Ephesians uh, 6, 12 as well, praise the Lord. We are not given a list of specific tactics that Satan will use. There is no listed specific tactics. That are, these, are, these are the tactics that Satan operates with. That's why we are in a spiritual warfare. However, the passage is quite clear that when we follow the instruction, what is the instruction? To go into this warfare now, what are the instructions we are to follow? To put on the complete armor of God. Do not leave anyone behind. You can't leave the helmet of salvation and put the breastplate of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Your head is going to be exposed. Are you seeing a soldier in the war zone without the, the one that protects the head and yet using the shield? The head will be exposed, praise the Lord, to bullets and any other things. So we must put on the complete armor of God, faithfully relying on the strength of the Holy Spirit because we have got no power of our own. Praise the Lord. We will be able to stand against the devil and return. And regardless of Satan's strategy, have victory. We know Satan has strategy, but there's no listed strategy. That is how this is particular way. Praise the Lord. But regardless of the strategy, we must come out with victory. Praise the Lord. You can get that in Ephesians 6.13. We've got two lesson outlines. The first one says, the whole armor of God. We must put on the whole armor of God before we can go into this warfare. So what is the whole armor of God? The second outline says, other weapons for spiritual warfare. After looking at the whole armor of God, we are going to be looking at other weapons that we can use to go into this battle. Praise the Lord. That we can harm ourselves with to go into this battle. We are going to be looking at all that. But let's look at the whole armor of God, the complete one. Praise the Lord. No soldier goes to battle with only one weapon. You can't just go with, you've got maybe the sword, the gun, you've got the, the shield, the helmet. But if you lose one, the enemy might get you through that one. You might, get, you might have everything as a soldier, a physical one now, but without the shield, the enemy will strike you. Praise the Lord. So you must go with the complete armor. You can't go with everything and leave the helmets as well. You can be stricken on the head. The devil might get the person on the head. That's because the, the person is not fully prepared. So you must go with the complete Armor. No soldier goes to the battle with only one weapon. However, when the battle is elongated, we may feel weary. We may be tempted to give up. Of course, when you are weary, when you are tired, you might be tempted to give up. When you are tired, you say, oh, I'm tired. I think I should just give up. But the battle is not ours. We don't have any strength of our own. Praise the Lord. But all these are the moment when we must remember that we do not fight in our own strength. We are not fighting in our own what? Strength. We don't have any power of our own. That's why we rely fully on the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why we are putting on the full, complete armor of God, which we are going to be looking at. Praise the Lord. According to Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. That's our Bible reading for today. We are encouraged to put on the whole armor of God. And these include the belt of truth. Praise the Lord. The belt of truth. That's one of the armor of God. What's the belt of truth? Praise the Lord. The first element of our armor is the truth. I want someone to read Ephesians 6, 14. Put on the first element, which is our armor of truth. That's the very first thing you need to go into that battle. So, verse 14. Thank you. Ephesians 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about, having your loins girt about with truth, 
and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Hmm. Having your loins geared about with what? Truth. What is the truth? Jesus answered and said in the book of John 14, verse 16, say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. So what is the truth? Who is the truth? You can't go without him. Praise the Lord. You can't go into that battle without the truth. Jesus is the truth. He said, you shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? I, I always use the word, make you free. The truth will do what? Make you free. You become free because of the truth. Praise the Lord. He said, is the way, is the truth, is the life. So the first element we need to go into the warfare, to go into battle in this life is the truth. We can do nothing without him. Praise the Lord. Let's not forget that. Let's not go without him. Let's not take a step without him. Practically speaking, don't go anywhere without him. Don't go to work without him. Praise the Lord. That's why I love a song that says, Jesus, go with me. I cannot go alone. Jesus, go with me. I cannot go alone. If you can't do anything, just, just say that in the morning. Say, I can't go alone. You think you know too much in your work. You think you are so, so talented. That's why you are successful. No, don't go alone. Don't go to your work alone. Don't go anywhere alone. Don't drive alone. Praise the Lord. You might be physically alone in the car, but you are not alone. Always invite him. Say, Jesus, I can't go alone. I can't drive alone. I can't go to work alone. I can't go to the bathroom alone. Someone has gone to the bathroom, slipped, hit the head on the edge of the ties and had internal bleeding in the brain and died. You think Jesus was with that person? Say, I can't go to the bathroom alone. I can't drive alone. Don't go without the truth. Praise the Lord. The life is a warfare. Whatever you are doing, you think you are driving, you are so gifted in that, it is a warfare. Don't go alone. Praise the Lord. Always put on that first element of our armor, which is the truth. And the truth I know is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Satan is said to be the father of lies. Let us read John 8, 44, please. John chapter 8, verse 44. John 8, 44, Satan is a father of lies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. You belong to your father, the devil. That's who's speaking. Jesus himself was talking. Go on, please. And you want to carry out your father's desires. Hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, hmm. for there is no truth in him. Hmm. When he lies, he speaks his native language, hmm. for he is a liar and the father of lies. Praise the Lord. You see the opposite? The opposite of Jesus Christ is Satan. That's the opposite of truth is what? That's simple English, primary English. So opposite of truth. Where's an opposite? Opposite of truth is what? Lie. If you look at this now, Jesus Christ is the way. The truth and the life. Praise the Lord. Satan is the father of all liars because he's a liar himself. He lied from the beginning. So he's the opposite of who? Satan. He said the truth is not in him. Just as himself was speaking, he said, Yea, out of your father the devil. How many of us lies? Praise the Lord. How many of us lies? You know you lie. Praise the Lord. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Because he's talking here. He said, Yea, out of your father the devil. The lost of and the loss of your father, ye will do. What are the loss of your father? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. So if you are lying, then the DNA of Satan is... If you go for DNA test, you know your father, right? Yes, when you say you want to go for DNA, not only if you are the father of these children. The DNA of the father should be in the child. Praise the Lord. So if you are lying, then the DNA... Of the father, which is Satan, the father of all liars, is in that person. But if you are saying the truth, then the DNA of Jesus is in you. So where do we belong? Praise the Lord. In this teaching, open our eyes this morning in Jesus' name. 
praise the Lord. You might look at it as a small lie. Ah, if I tell him that I'm at home, I am uh, here, they will bother me. I'll just say, no, I'm not available. I'm, this, I'm, I'm at this place, me at the other place. Say the truth, explain the reason. I need some rest. I need to be by myself. I don't think I can, I can attend to you today. Just say the truth and let the truth make us free in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We are in a warfare. Don't think we are going to be in a physical war before you know you are in a warfare. Sleeping and waking up alone, you are going to battle as you are going to sleep at night. Don't say, ah, what am I getting this teaching for? Belt of truth. What am I getting this teaching, this teaching for? Am I going to warfare? Am I going to war zone? By the time you go to sleep, people went to sleep as well, and some didn't wake up. They cannot live to tell you the story. They are not alive to tell you what they went through while they were sleeping. Some of you can testify of what you have gone through while sleeping. Some of you can talk of the, of the battle you fought while others look at you and think that you are sleeping there. And you are in a battle. Praise the Lord. So don't go to sleep alone. Praise the Lord. Don't do anything alone. Always be with the truth. Praise the Lord. Satan is said to be the father of all lies. So all liars, they know their father. So truthful people also know their father. Praise the Lord. We are therefore exhorted to put on truth for our own sanctification and deliverance. Let us read John chapter 8 verse 32. Please. John 8 32. We are exhorted to put on truth for our own sanctification and deliverance. For us to be delivered, for us to be sanctified, we must put on what? Truth. In John 8, 32. Okay. John 8, 32. Jesus spoke to the Jews who had believed him. If you obey my teaching, he said, you are really my disciples. We studied this some time ago. If you obey my teachings, how do you obey? You obey, you carry out the, you obey the teachings. Praise the Lord. You are truly my disciples. So, we must therefore put on truth for our own sanctification and our own deliverance. Praise the Lord. The second armor is the breastplate of righteousness. Praise the Lord. The first one we talked about was the belt of truth. The second one is the breastplate of what? Righteousness. A breastplate shield is a warrior's vital organs. A, a breastplate shield, it shields a warrior's vital organs from blows that would otherwise be fatal. That breastplate, it shields the warrior. You know this physically, when you want to see is physically when you watch, I've not been physically to a war zone, but I've, all of us must have watched the news of soldiers and all that's happening in other countries. You see the way soldiers. That breastplate it shields the warrior's what? organs from blows, bullets, as the case may be, that will otherwise be what? Fatal. Praise the Lord. So to go into our own spiritual warfare, we need also the breastplate of what? Righteousness. This righteousness is not just made up of various works of righteousness done by men. Your righteousness is not made up of various works that you have done. Our righteousness is of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Rather, this is the righteousness of Christ, imputed by God and received by faith. That's where faith comes in. Praise the Lord. The righteousness of Christ, imputed by God, and you get that righteousness by, by faith. Praise the Lord which guard our hearts against the accusations and charges of Satan and secures our innermost being from his attack. Praise the Lord. So what secures our innermost being from the attack? Physical, now the, 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 the shield of righteousness is what secures the physical soldier's vital organs. So that shield of righteousness is what secures our innermost being from his attack. We all know that the devil goes about 
like a roaring lion, just seeking for whom to devour. You don't need to offend the devil. You don't need to plan for, for it. We are already in a battle. We are already in warfare. You don't need to say, I am not. How do you say so? I think that it should be the, the, the highest form of ignorance. If you say, I'm not in a warfare, that would be the highest form of ignorance. Just like putting someone in the, in the forefront of the battle and a person just say, I am not part of this. And you turn. The first uh, shot will meet that person. Praise the Lord. Because the person is so ignorant. And when you are so ignorant, you will be just... The first shot will meet that person. But when you are not ignorant, you, you are not ignorant, you are observant. You will know what to do. At least you will be able to miss shot because you are observant, you are watchful. Praise the Lord. May our eyes be opened in Jesus' name. The third armor is preparation of the gospel of peace. When you preach the gospel, God himself will fight for you. When you preach the gospel, tell people about Jesus Christ. He himself is taking over your battle. Praise the Lord. Let's read Isaiah 52, verse 7. Praise the Lord. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, hmm. that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that said unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Praise the Lord. How beautiful are the feet of those people that bring good news. Who are the people? What is the good news? The gospel of Jesus. How beautiful is their feet? What eyes? The eyes, the way we see is not the way God sees. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. The Bible describes it that how beautiful are the feet of the people that bring the good news. Praise the Lord. By the time you preach the gospel, God himself fights. We, we, we are in a war zone already. We are in a war zone already. Know you this day. Life itself is a battle. Praise the Lord. Have you seen someone struggling for life? You will know that we are in a war zone. Have you seen a little child struggling to survive a particular kind of ailment? At the end of the day, the child, I've seen a, a baby of about seven months give up. I knew that the life is a battle. Praise the Lord. It's a battle. And we are not going alone in this battle in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. These are the things we need to take. The one we talked about just now was what? The preparation for the gospel of peace. It is a weapon. It is what? It is a weapon. Preparing for the gospel of peace, you are carrying what is more than AK-47 to go for the, for the battle. Just by doing what? By preparing. Just by doing what? By telling someone that Jesus Christ is Lord. That telling someone that Jesus is the only way. You are doing what? You are holding weapon already. Praise the Lord. Look at another weapon. The shield of what? Faith. Our faith is that Christ is the author and finisher. That is our faith. Is the author and finisher of what? Of our faith. Let's read Hebrews 12, verse 2. Hebrews 12, verse 2. The shield of faith, one of the weapons we need to go with in the battle of life. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. Looking unto Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. So the shield of faith is one of the weapons that we cannot go with. It has your faith like. He, he is like a golden shield. You know shields that soldiers as well. You look at a... If you're designing of a soldier, just, if you look at it, just picture it and see what they, when you are set for war. Praise the Lord. He is like a golden shield. 
precious, solid, and substantial with which one can be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. That's what he is like. He's shielding, shielding you. So that's why arrows go about each day. They are unseen arrows, invisible ones. What do you think is shielding us from those? Praise the Lord. The things you have gone through in life, some people have gone through that. They, cannot, they, they, they are not alive to tell the story. Praise the Lord. You think it's by your intelligence that you're able to that you scale through. The journeys you have gone through, the things you have done, that you made it, you came out alive. I've, I've had near-death experience. I know most of us have had that as well. Near-death experience. That people pass through that kind of situation, they are not alive to say that. I've been to a surgery that I, I can't even explain. I saw myself in, a, in, in, like in the clouds, but I was, they were struggling to give me oxygen to revive me up. They were trying to put oxygen to, to see. I don't know what was happening, but I saw myself floating. I just saw a very, like a very peaceful place. I was saying, ah, this is peace. This is peace. No trouble. No, what is this? All of a sudden, I saw people trying to put me in stretch arch. I just saw kind of emergency situation rolling me. There was oxygen. And I said, oh, this is stress. Look at noise. Look at what is all this. this is that where I'm coming from, the place is so peaceful. Praise the Lord. People are not alive to say the story of what you have gone through. What do you think is shielding you? What do you think is the shield? What do you think is blocking you from those arrows touching you? The shield of faith. Let's build our faith. We've, we all have, as Christians, we have faith. Don't say the only issue is that I don't really have faith. That man has faith. We've all got faith. I said it here before. I said it anywhere I go that everyone has got faith. It's just that you don't build on it. Who told you that you're going to wake up this morning? Why do you believe that while you were sleeping last night, you wake up this morning? It's not the faith that you had. You had faith. That's why you, you prepared for this morning last night. You would have said, I'm not going to wake up this morning. Am I sure? People slept. Why am I sure I'll wake up? You would have said that. But you've got faith. We've all got faith. Jesus said, if our faith is as small as a mustard seed, we'll, do, we'll move mountains. Why don't you build on your faith? Praise the Lord. So one of the weapons we need is the shield of faith. Faith itself is what? A shield. It protects. Praise the Lord. The fifth armor, the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. The head is the seat of the mind. Whatever is in your mind is from the head. The head is what? Is the seat of the mind. Which when it has laid hold of the sure gospel hope of eternal life will not accept false doctrine or give way to Satan's temptations. Praise the Lord. The helmet. That the one that protects the head. Praise the Lord. Physically now. The soldier go to war protecting the head. So that the head will not be what? Hit by maybe arrow, bullet, or whatever. Protecting what? The head. is one of the things we need to go with. Now, the helmet of salvation. What's happening in your head? Praise the Lord. The head is the seat of the mind. What is there? When, which when it has laid hold of the sure gospel, hope of eternal life, will not accept false doctrine or give way to Satan's temptations. Is there anything you hear, you take? Is there any temptation you see, you fall into? Praise the Lord. The helmet of salvation is not everything you, you just involve yourself. Because you've got the helmet of what? Salvation. Filtering the things that goes into your brain and the ones that need to go and the ones that don't need to go. It's not everything you, you see, you just, you just accept. It's not every kind of uh, doctrine you see, you accept. Or give way to Satan's temptations. I thought you begin to give way to every single temptation. We know there's there. We know there is. We know. But with the helmet of salvation, we will not accept false doctrines. Praise the Lord. 
is one of the weapons, one of the armor that we need to go into the warfare in this life. The unsaved person has no hope of protecting themselves from damaging spiritual blows. The unsaved person, there's no hope. Praise the Lord. There is no communion. Of what communion is light and darkness? You are unsaved. What is, how are you going to have the, the, the belt of truth, which is Jesus Christ? When you have not accepted him in your life, when you are doing things on your own, praise the Lord. For you to be saved, what is the first step you take? As a saved person, the first step is just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. That's the first step. You are inviting him to come. That's the truth is there with you. Praise the Lord. So the unsaved person has got no hope. There's a, my mom always said always one word that is like an open wound to tetanus. An open wound. No kind of anti-tetanus injection, nothing. The wound is open. The unsaved person has got no what? Hope. Praise the Lord. He has got no hope of protecting themselves from damaging spiritual blows or false doctrine because they are lacking the helmet of what? Salvation. Because what they are lacking the helmet of salvation. May we not lack that helmet of salvation in Jesus' name. And their mind is incapable of discerning between spiritual truth and spiritual deception. That we call truth. And that we call what? Deception. Deception is kind of, it, it looks as if it's the truth, but it's the opposite. Praise the Lord. Opposite, being painted. That's why we call it kind of a, it's, it's seducing. It's, I don't know what to use for that. It's, a, it's deception. They can't discern between spiritual truth and between spiritual what? Deception. Because the helmet of salvation is not there. Praise the Lord. It's not there. So they cannot have that spirit of discernment. Because even as, as Christians also, we cannot even go far without the discerning spirit. You cannot go far. Because whatever comes your way, you will accept it. Whatever doctrine comes your way, you will say, ah, the person, have, ah, the person is holding the Bible. That's all I need to see. You are just seeing with your, spiritual, with your physical eyes. You cannot discern evil from good. You are just, without that discerning spirit, you are just moving like someone that is blind. Praise the Lord. So we need the helmet of what? Praise the Lord. To help us discern evil and good, truth and deception. Praise Master Jesus. You can get that in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 3. The sword of the spirit. That's the sixth one. You see, we are carrying up to six armories. What would, I, what would I call that? In this life, daily. Don't say, ah, when I'm going to, for war, I will get it. When do you know you are going for war? Why coming to this place this morning? is war. Praise the Lord. So the six armor you will owe, the six arm, ammunition you will owe, is the sword of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So what's the sword of the Spirit? This is the word of God. Which is both the offensive and the defensive weapon of victorious living. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. And you cannot go to war without it. Yes. There was a testimony long ago about the sword of the spirit. It's a young boy that always pray. Many years ago, while I was still in school, the boy, when the boy started praying inside his room, the people in the hostel, the noise becomes too much. Praise the Lord. At the particular night, this boy was praying. To cut story short, the whole room lit up as if uh, there's a white, a white shining light just came upon his, upon his room. The whole place was shining. He couldn't even behold the light. He was trying to look at the light in his room. When he was looking at the face, thank God for the spirit of discernment. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that helmet of salvation. I would call it the spirit of discernment. He had it. While he was praying, the whole room lit up. The, the being was so white as if it's a kind of spiritual being that I want to say maybe it's Jesus. And he looked at the face. He couldn't behold the face. It was shining the way the Bible described Jesus' face. He was looking at the face and the face said, Now, behold my son, you have done well. 
What is it you want? Just ask so I can do it for you. What would be your response if you are the one? Praise the Lord. What would be your response if you are the one? You will start listing things. Praise the Lord. Well, thank God for the spirit of this of discernment. This young man looked at the bean and said, who are you that I want to ask something from? Devil cannot tell you I'm Jesus. He cannot. Even if he's lying, he can't say he's Jesus. He said, who are you that I want to ask something from? That's, why the, that's how the room transformed from white to red. The light in the room became red. And there was a warfare. What was his weapon? The word. He was using the word. I come against you by the power in the name of Jesus, without authority given to me to tread upon snake and scorpion. I come against you. That was coming. He was using the word. That's how I say the word. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. As he was using the word against that being, he was piercing that being with the words, with just his mouth. Why don't he go and get cutlass? He can't walk. Get knife, gone. It won't work. What he needs, the sword of the spirit. Praise the Lord. If you look at that particular scenario, you see the helmet of salvation there. Helping that young man to know that this is not Jesus. I can't ask something from you. Who are you? He was able to discern. He was able to ask. And the sword of the spirit came in. And that boy was in that battle throughout the night. The people in the hostel testified that nobody slept in that block. That this boy was shouting, I come against you by the power in the name of Jesus. He was just using the word. People said, this prayer is different. People knew. Until he came to give this, he gave the testimony in the church that look at what he was going through that night. And, he, and the being left. He defeated the being with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is what we must have. Praise the Lord. That's one of the weapons we must what? Have. The topic says the weapons of our warfare. Don't say, I'm not going to war. Am I a soldier? What am I preparing for? Prepare because we are in warfare. You sleep in your house, you are in a war zone. You are driving your car, you are in a war zone. You are going to work, you are in a war zone. I've seen people that have been lied against and are in jail today of something they know nothing about, but they are suffering in prison. So whatever you are doing, don't go alone. Praise the Lord. So these are the weapons of our warfare. Finally, the last weapon is what? Praise the Lord. We cannot neglect prayer as it is the channel by which we draw spiritual strength from God. Praise the Lord. Prayer. Without prayer and without reliance upon God, our efforts at spiritual warfare are empty and what? Futile. Let's take First Thessalonians 5, 17. Without prayer, all our effort of this spiritual warfare. If you look at the young man, I give an example about. He was in the midst of praying. Praise the Lord. So without prayer, all our efforts are what? Futile. Let's take First Thessalonians 5, 17. Thank you, sir. Never stop what? Some version will say pray without ceasing. Not season as in S E A S O N. People, people write it that way. It's C E A S I N G. Season. That's pray without stopping. Don't cease in your prayers. Don't stop praying. You don't need to go into a particular corner before you pray. Praise the Lord. Thank God for, for God. He hears any language, any tribe. You don't need to open your mouth for me to hear what you are talking about before you can communicate with God. So pray without what? Seizing. Pray without stopping. Pray always. Praise the Lord. So we talked about the weapons of our warfare. Now we listed six. We talked about the belt of truth. That belt of truth is Jesus. You can't do nothing without him. He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the light. I'm the light. That's he. He's the truth. He said, you, should, you will know the truth. And the truth will make you what? Free. That's you know Jesus. He will make you free. Praise the Lord. We talk about all these things. The helmet of, of, of salvation. Praise the Lord. We talk about prayer. And now we're talking about other spiritual warfare. 
all that spiritual warfare. Praise the Lord. the Lord. Hallelujah. We talked about all the weapons we'll be taking to our warfare. Those weapons we mentioned earlier on, we mentioned six. Now we're looking at others. Praise the Lord. We mentioned six. We're looking at others. The power of praise, worship, thanksgiving. When the children of God went into war, praise the Lord, what happened that the walls of Jericho fell down? Did they use something to break the wall? Hammer or or sledgehammer to break that wall. What for? What made that wall? Is a very. If you look at those, the way that wall was described is the wall of. If you look at prison walls. I don't know the way prison walls are. If you go to want to see real prison, we go to you see prison walls. They are very thick and and high. The walls fell down flat. Why? Why? They were praising God. It's a song that says the walls of Jericho fell down flat. The walls of Jericho fell down flat as the children of God were praising the Lord. The walls of Jericho fell down flat. They were praising God. Praise the Lord. When they went to the battlefield, they just, they just started praising God. So that's where I got to know that praising God is a weapon. Praise the Lord. What is that situation you are going through? Say, ah, this is too much for me. The whole world look at you and see your face so heavy. We're in a long face all the time. Instead of you to be praising God. Praise the Lord. I learned in my SOD that the weapon of the believer is joy. When you start praising God, forget about your problem. Let that problem go and die for all I care. Just start praising God. Your praises will move him. Praise the Lord. That's his food. That's what he eats. Why don't you give him his food? You think when you make God to move, Satan can touch you? No. Somebody that gives you food all the time. Praise the Lord. You have the power of protecting that person. Will you let that person die? The person that gives you your favorite food all the time makes you happy. Praising God all the time is a weapon. Praise the Lord. Praise, worship, and thanksgiving is undeniable as it can defeat the enemies without physical combat. Let's read 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15, and 22 to 24. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15, we're in the Sunday school class, and 15, 20, verse 15. Twenty-two to twenty-four. Praise the Lord. You see, praise the Lord. I'm sorry, ma. Praise the Lord. You don't fear the multitude that is against you in this war that we are going to now. Don't be intimidated by the kind of the kind of uh, armories they have, the kind of arm arms they have. Don't be intimidated. The battle is not what it's not us. Let's read twenty-two to twenty-four, please. Praise the Lord.
praise the Lord. What weapon did the children of God use in this battle? When the enemies came in multitudes, in numbers, looking at the sights alone, you know they were scared. But thank God they were told, hearken, listen. The, f- the first verse read, do not be afraid of these people. The, the people they saw, they were, ah, these people are there too much. Do not be afraid. But as they started singing, the enemies started killing themselves. God instead set ambushment against them. There was confusion even in their camp. And we as Christians, if you look back in your life, you must have testimony of our enemies begin to expose themselves because of your matter. Praise the Lord. You might not be able to remember now. You might go home and think about it. Our enemies, sometimes meant to destroy you. That what was meant to destroy the children of God. But at the end of the day, they destroy themselves. How something that is planned to, to destroy you backfired. Praise the Lord. So this is a clear case of that. May God bless his word in our hearts this morning in Jesus' name. So let's, there is power in praise, worship, giving thanks. It is very potent. Praise the Lord. The name of Jesus is another strong weapon. Just his name. God himself highly exalted Jesus and gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, every knee, every trouble, every difficulty, praise the Lord, shall bow at the mention of that name. His name alone is another strong weapon which will be supported by a personal relationship with God. That name must be what? Supported by a personal relationship with God. What is your relationship with God like? How is it like? Praise the Lord. So it must be supported by the relationship you have with the Father because he himself is the one that highly exalted him. He's the one that gave him that name. That's how the mention of this name, every knee in heaven, earth, underneath, they shall do what? Bow. So what is that situation? Why not take that? Why not take that? What's the best uh, weapon you know? Is it pump action? Is it a AK-47? I don't know. Why not take it? If it's the pump action, take that name. It is very potent. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. What's the knee? What's the issue? It must bow at the mention of the name. So that is also a weapon. Praise the Lord. Also, the blood of Jesus provides victory over all our enemies. The blood of Jesus, what? It provides victory over all our enemies. Something happened long ago in school. One, our pastor in school, Pastor Femi, he was telling us a, a testimony that there's a particular, he's a law student. Exam period is when you see people that want to, if they want to get you, that day they come to get you. Did they in your exam hall? That was our days in school. He always preached to this particular brother, give your life to Jesus, come to church. That, that young man keeps saying, ah, I like flexing, I like enjoying myself, I don't like boring life. I don't want to be bored. So during that fateful day, they were in the exam hall. They were writing the exam. Suddenly, from nowhere, some people entered the exam hall. You know the way this uh, exam or this uh, hall that you see the seats going from step to step like stadium. Lecture theater. So some people came in, started shooting inside the exam hall, shooting guns. Everybody lied down. So Pastor Femi was under his locker. Pastor Femi was there. was just in his mind saying, blood of Jesus. Blood. He said the brother that he was preaching to was right beside him all the time. That brother was saying, basin of blood of Jesus. The basin, the full basin. The full basin. That one was recording for the full basin. After God saved them, those people left. He now asked the boy, if you carry the full basin, which one with everybody take? Praise the Lord. There's a person that now I know the potency of the blood of Jesus. He knows that there's power in the blood of Jesus. At that point, when he was confused, some of the Lord requests blood of Jesus. As the was saying blood of Jesus, he was just saying the basin. He wanted the full basin of the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We as Christians, we can testify as well. We plead the blood of Jesus. We use the blood of Jesus. When we pray, we know what we use it for. Praise the Lord. There is power. It's a weapon as well. It is one of our weapons of our warfare. Know you this day. 
the blood of Jesus, it is one of our very potent weapons. Because he did not share that blood in vain. He did not share that blood in vain in the cross of Calvary. So the blood is very potent. Praise the Lord. We can read Revelation 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Or because of time, we can just study that at home. We have that in, our, in the WhatsApp group. You will see everything there. You can just go and do a detailed study on your own. Praise the Lord. So that we can move ahead. The personal testimony of the followers of Christ is a highly potent weapon connecting Christians to God's grace and each other. Testifying alone that this is what God has done. Praise the Lord. This is what God has done. It's what? It's also a potent weapon. Connecting Christians to God's grace and not just that within each other. Testifying is a weapon. Praise the Lord. Giving testimony is a weapon. You should know this day. The things that God has done for you. Testifying it to his glory. Saying it. Giving him all the glory. When you are giving somebody glory, you know what that means? Say, ah, um, this, my brother, is a very bad person. He don't help me at all. But the good he has done for you, anybody you your brother go to, he will hear you are talking evil about him. He has not helped you. But he has done things for you. You refuse to tell people about that. You always tell people about what he has not done. He has not been able to buy me a car. But he was able to see you through uni. Praise the Lord. He has not been able to get you this. He was able to do that. You don't say about the good things he has done for you. But you say anywhere go ahead about the evil things you say concerning him. Praise the Lord. That's bad. But in the case of testimony... You are saying things about what this your brother has done for you. Telling people how good this my brother is. How good this person has been. No matter how tiny that thing is. Testify. To the glory of God. Testify this is what God has done. If not for God. If not for the Lord. That has been by our side. Those are testimonies. Where would I have been? Where would I have been? I have been nowhere. It is by his mercies that we are not consumed. Let all the glory go back to him. It is not by your power. It is not by your intelligence. It is not by your strength that you do anything you do today. Praise the Lord. I keep saying it. When people think they believe so much in science, they are philosophers. A single thing came and confused everyone. Even the medical team. They were all confused. Praise the Lord. So, always testify. Because that also is the weapon of our warfare. Praise the Lord. Each testimony speaks of God's presence and of the transforming power that defeats the enemy and inspires hope in the downtrodden ones, especially the downtrodden ones, giving them hope. Praise the Lord. Testifying is not boasting. Telling people what God can do. You can be testifying about what God has done. And there's someone there that is downtrodden that is being Hopeful that if God can do this, then God can do my own. Praise the Lord. So by the time you testify to the glory of God, it is a weapon of warfare as well. Praise the Lord. So we should learn this day that testifying to his goodness, to his glory, it is a weapon. Christian fasting is equally an amazing tool of the believer for spiritual warfare in breaking bondage and setting the captives free. Christian fasting. Long ago, one of my pastors would say, Spare. Some people are very big physically. They are huge. They've got biceps. They look very strong. Say, but spiritually, they are baby wearing pampas. Praise the Lord. You know a baby that is with pampas that he can even control your pee and your poo. That's what they are spiritually. Then you can see someone that has been fasting for days, looking very lean and weak. Go and try that person spiritually. That is a giant. Praise the Lord. If you can see the difference. The Christian fasting is an amazing tool. It is a tool. It is a weapon. The fasting of the Forget about the food. Forget about the pleasure. Forget about the looks. After some fasting, you see you see you are not the same. But spiritually, you feel very heavy. You feel very strong. I know what I'm talking about. The Christian fasting is an amazing tool of the believer 
for spiritual warfare, in breaking bondage, setting captives free. Praise the Lord. You can't go into a battle without a, a, a serious battle now being, maybe for instance, you are called to come and set a captive person free. Praise the Lord. Especially in the area of deliverance from maybe a demonic spirit. And you go to your home, eat chicken fried rice and have some cold juice. And you are going to pray for the person. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray for the person. Filling your stomach, having all sorts of chicken, whatever you want to eat. Spiritually, you will just be like a fly. A fly. But by the time you forget about the pleasures, the pleasure of the food, every other thing. And physically, you are not that strong. But spiritually, you are very strong. Praise the Lord. So the Christian fasting can never be overemphasized. The potency of the Christian fasting can never be overemphasized. You have a kind of battle, a kind of challenge. Why not just take that weapon? Why not just take that weapon of fasting upon yourself? Why not empower yourself with that fasting? Go without food and see how you become spiritually. You yourself will bear witness by yourself that, ah, the way I prayed that night, I wasn't the one praying. The way I did this, I have one testimony about Christian fasting. When we were in school, I was children about it, all my children are all aware. When, I, when that thing happened, I was not even married. But my children know about it. We were asked to go and take a particular song. I was to take the, the solo is about four. So we have four soloists. So I'm taking one, the second part. When I look at it, this is a very simple song. I don't need to rehearse this song. It's so when you come in tomorrow, don't eat. Normally, quiet, don't eat. Don't eat, don't take anything. Just come, come fasting, come praying. When I got home, I said, this song is too simple. I don't need to rehearse this song. I was in school then. I don't need to rehearse this song. By the time I sing this song, they will know that, ah, someone can sing this song very well. I didn't pray at all. In the morning, I looked at everything. I said, let me just take hot tea. Hot tea will do my voice good. So I took hot tea. When we got to church, the first person sang his own part. It's the, the remix of Amazing Grace. The remix, say, I'm amazing. It's a response. The first person sang his part. I had the mic to take a second part. My mouth was like, they use. They use a, a cellotape to gum it. I couldn't say a word. I was with the mic. The choir was responding. I'm, I'm amazing. They were responding. So the church did not understand what was going on. The church did not understand because there was response. Nobody understood. But I just the thing wiped off my memory. As simple as that song, it was erased. I didn't remember a dot in that line. I was there. The choir was all looking at me. But someone took his part. The next person took his part and covered up. When did we close? My pastor asked, what happened? Why didn't you sing? Ah, God. I said, I didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't pray. I didn't fast. I took tea. I said, the song is too simple. Lean not on your own understanding, my brothers and sisters. I said, the song was too simple. I cannot go and be praying and fasting because of amazing grace. Amazing grace, I would be feast. No, no, it's not a difficult song. I couldn't sing. So my partner said, you are taking the next solo. He's a disciplinarian. He's a very strong disciplinarian. You are taking the next solo next Sunday. Limited time to learn the song. This one is a very brand new song. It's not even what I know before. I'm going to take it on Sunday. Don't pray. Drink your tea. <laughs> so nobody told me what to do. I was fasting, praying. I don't need to tell you that. And the song, it was a program. A program that pastors will attend. And immediately I started singing. I was, my, I wasn't even singing, I can't, I can't say to that. My mouth was just moving. I just noticed that my lip is moving. And I saw people waving their hands. People were just waving, so people were standing, people were waving their hands. After the administration, a pastor came to me with his two hands and said, I was blessed by your administration. People came to me, my fellow choristers said, they, changed, they said, what I rehearsed and what I sang was different. What I sang and what, I, what we did in the Riyaza, they said they were totally different. I sang something else that is far better than what we rehearsed. Praise the Lord. So from there, I begin to tell people about the power of fasting and prayer. Don't take any tax, no matter how simple. Don't lean on your understanding. I know how to drive very well. I'm, a, I'm an experienced driver. I've been driving for the past 15 years. I've never uh, scratched any car, so I can drive. You don't have any power of your own. Praise the Lord. 
So the potency of the Christian fasting can never be overemphasized. It is very powerful. We all can testify. I can testify. Praise the Lord. We can see that in Isaiah 58, verse 6, and Matthew 17, verse 21. We do not often think of unity as a spiritual weapon. But it was one of the greatest weapons the early church employed when praying for Peter's deliverance from prison. Unity. Do not forsake the assembling of the righteous. Let's take Acts 12, verse 5, please. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayers was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Praise the Lord. Prayers were made without what? Stopping of the church, not one person. This is talking about unity. We do not often think of unity as a spiritual weapon. Praise the Lord. One, we chase a thousand. If you look at that mathematics, it's not correct at all. One person, we chase one thousand. Then two, we now chase, instead of 2,000, they say 10,000. Praise the Lord. One person is 1,000. Two will be what? 2,000. They say one will chase 8,000. Two is going to chase what? 10,000. Praise the Lord. The power of unity. It is a weapon. Praise the Lord. United, we stand. Divided, we fall. Let's not backbite ourselves. Praise the Lord. Let's be united as one, even as Christian. One body. Praise the Lord. United we stand and divided what? We fall. So that unity itself, it is a weapon. Praise the Lord. I can, give, I can go on and on and give illustrations. It is a weapon. A house that is divided against itself cannot stand. Praise the Lord. A house divided against itself. You see, let me give you a illustration of a house, of a couple, married couple with children. They are always quarreling and fighting. They are not united. You see, ah, today the child is, you see different evil things happening there. Because devil have come to sit down in that home. Praise the Lord. But when there is unity, there is no loophole. That is, that's my son name. My son name is, is, is spelled, is, yeah, I, I, let me not pronounce it, it's a native name. It means unity. Praise the Lord. When there is unity, the enemy cannot penetrate. In the things of God, when there is unity, enemies cannot do what? They cannot penetrate. Even in your home, even in your marriage. When there is unity, there will be no loophole for the enemy to penetrate into. So unity itself is a weapon. A man with his wife, they are at home. He told his wife that, my friends, my pastor friends are coming to the house, so prepare something very nice. The wife spent her time and made something nice. When they were eating the food, lo and behold, the salt in the food can kill so the pastor friend had told the husband that, ah, what kind of salt is this? Ah, this thing can, the, the, the man told his friend that, ah, I forgot to tell you, this is the way I like my food. I would have told you. He didn't join to, 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 to talk about his wife. He said, oh, the man himself was surprised the way the salt that his wife made was so bad. He didn't, his friend was going to talk about it. Ah, what kind of food is this? He said, oh, this is the way I like my food. My wife knows. I would have told you. From there, that man couldn't say a word concerning his wife. That she's a bad cook. He couldn't say that because the husband said, this is the way I love eating my food. Praise the Lord. There's no way they will penetrate if there's unity. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. In the case of, uh, of uh, Peter's deliverance from prison, prayers were made in unity. Prayers were made and it was delivered. Praise the Lord. So, unity itself is what? A weapon. Also, Jesus promised his disciples and all believers that there will always be answered prayers whenever they are in agreement. Unity and agreement, there's a slight difference. He said there will always be answered prayers whenever there's what? Agreement. Can two work together except they what? Except they agree. You see many troubled cases today, especially in homes. Disagreement. I disagree. I don't agree with you. No, this, this. Can two work together? I said they do what? Agree. So that agreement itself is what? It is a potent weapon as well. Praise the Lord. May we not agree with evil in Jesus' name. Oh, we say agreement. Don't agree with anything you see. That's why you need spirit of discernment. It's not everything you see you just accept. I don't want to agree. Let's just agree. I don't want to. Let's just agree. No. Praise the Lord. 
Agreement is also a potent weapon in our warfare. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Matthew 18, verse 19. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Praise the Lord. Again, I say unto you, Jesus Christ is speaking, if two of you shall agree concerning anything, that's why Christians will pray prayer, with, we pray with prayer of agreement. Say, ah, brother John, come, let's agree. Come, let's come together. Let's agree. Let's pray a prayer of agreement. Praise the Lord. Say, if two of you shall agree concerning anything, because you are in agreement, it shall be done for you. Praise the Lord. So agreement is also a potent weapon of warfare. Praise the Lord. We are concluding. The conclusion says, every battle belongs to the Lord. Engage God always and he will give you victory. We talked about our warfare today. We talked about a lot of things. Praise Master Jesus. Thank God we can go into our group chat, on the school group chat, and see that there. Take all these, adopt them, and they will help us in the journey of life in Jesus' name. First of all, don't go anywhere without the belt of truth. Don't go without Jesus. Go with him. Sing praise and worship in your closet, in your kitchen, when you're having your shower. Just begin to sing. Be a worshiper. Praise the Lord. Those are weapons. If you don't know how to sing, it doesn't matter. Sing to your father. May God help us in Jesus' name. Now it's question time. If you have any question, or that is here, mom is here, any contribution?